In this section on stabilizing your application, we used a few new node modules that we hadn't before. The first is the debugger. The debugger we used when we wanted to step through our application to be able to pinpoint exactly where an issue was occurring. We used breakpoints to be able to walk from point to point using the continue flags. And we also stepped into the REPL that lives inside of the debugger and used it to inspect the current value of variables at the moment of execution. The debugger is very useful when you're diagnosing difficult problems, especially race conditions or anything related to that. The next module that we used extensively was errors. As we went over, there are many different types of errors in Node.js grouped into different categories like eval error, syntax, range, reference type, and URI, and then a whole host of system errors and user-specified errors that we triggered ourselves, as well as errors from the assertion module. All those taken together are a lot to deal with, but we went over some ways that you can try and catch different errors so that they don't kill your thread and take down your app. But then, as mentioned, you can use the debugger to jump deeper into any issues that you're experiencing to try to figure out where that execution is hitting a problem. The last module that we introduced here was assert. Assert is the assertion library built into Node.js. A lot of people include third-party libraries when it really isn't necessary. Assert includes a whole bunch of functionality out of the box. We use the ability to assert equality between different values, assert that things should not throw when they're called, and assert that things are truthy using assert.ok. As you can see, there are a number of other assertions that you can make, and these taken together wrap up much of what you need to be able to do to write robust unit and integration tests. Most unit and integration tests are simply asserting equality or asserting that things shouldn't or should throw. Now that we've gone over these, we can move on to the next section in this course, which is all about performance. In the next section, we're going to go through how to tweak your application to make it faster, how to diagnose performance issues, and how to get the most out of your underlying CPU and memory resources. So without further ado, we can move on to the next section.